What I'm going to do today is go through the next lesson that we should have had um, on Monday night and, and figured the best thing to do um, instead is to record kind of a series of videos of what we would have covered in class and kind of work our way through it as best we can. And, and this way you can kind of go at your own speed, if you will, um, and, and see how it goes. So uh, we're going to cover the next lesson which is doing another structure um, but we're actually going to do the structure that is the Lincoln Pavilion uh, up in Lincoln Park Chicago um, and this is done by Studio Gang and, and if you're not familiar with it <coughs> I've got a couple images here that I'll share with you um, this is the actual pavilion itself you can see it's a simple barrel vault shape and it's made up of a series of laminated beams that are bolted together uh, to create the kind of extruded form. Now we're just going to focus in on kind of the first module of this because um, in theory if we can build one module we can then extrude it for as long of as much, many repetitions as we as we'd like. So just a couple more shots here it is kind of at night. Notice that the um, kind of fiberglass uh, onion dome like forms don't come all the way down to the bottom. At the very bottom row of these are, are left empty. Um, here they are a little bit up close. Also notice that there's uh, kind of a seam at each of these locations. Um, we're going to use those when we construct it and also to kind of control a loft. So instead of doing a nice smooth loft, we're going to do a, a segmented loft so that it creates those individual seams. And one last image kind of a, down the, the connection. It's kind of lifted just off the ground and, and we won't necessarily um, mess with that, but, but easy enough to, to add into our definition. So. Um, in order to start this, we need to kind of understand the principles of a uh, Rhino command that's called flow along surface. And, and if you're not familiar with this, you really should kind of become familiar with it because it's an extremely useful tool in order to do a series of different operations. Um, and, and what I'm kind of giving you as the base file is all of this geometry right here. Um, which consists of a, the barrel vault, which is the kind of rough shape for the final uh, pavilion, a flattened out version of that barrel vault. So if I just simply do an unroll surface command, um, it'll go ahead and create a flattened version of that. It can do it without a problem because this is a ruled surface. It is not doubly curved like a sphere. It, it simply has moves in, in one axis. Um, and in this scenario, it's the y-axis that everything uh, rotates around and creates a, a flattened version of that. Um, and that's the kind of laid out purple surface that you're seeing uh, over here on the right. And last but not least is some kind of base geometry um, that we then want to map uh, to this uh, ruled surface over here on the left. And the reason that this is an incredibly uh, useful command, the flow along surface, is because you can actually then generate any sort of geometry you want on a flattened version of the surface and then quickly project this uh, along a non-flattened version. So you could kind of create some patterns. In this scenario, I'm just simply kind of drawing a series of lines. Um, I might duplicate the border here and use this as a trimming border. So when I go ahead and just want to get rid of the excess of these lines beyond the surface itself, like so. And now with the flow along surface command, um, what that lets me do is select the objects I want to flow. So essentially that becomes all of the uh, geometry, the flattened geometry, the flattened lines here that I just kind of constructed. And if I was a little bit more uh, diligent in my layer control. I could do this a little bit quicker and select them by layer, but that's okay. Hit enter. It asks for a base surface near a corner. So obviously the flattened version is going to be my base surface. And the corner is kind of a reference. So if I pick the lower right corner here, I want to make sure I pick the lower right corner of my target surface here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the lower right corner. And now it says a target surface. I'm also going to pick the same corner. And there it goes. It goes ahead and maps those. Now the way that this is operating is quite simple. Um, remember, I've talked a lot about how geometry is being constructed and, and that every surface has a U and a V axis. It's, it's, it's kind of similar to the X, Y, Z coordinate system, but it's relative to a surface. Um, and in order to be able to see that, all we have to do is type in direction. And you can see now that the positive W is all the white arrows. The U uh, in this scenario is similar to the X axis, which is the red. Uh, so you can see the U is kind of moving to the lower right, to the kind of, I guess, 
5 o'clock uh, location. The V is the green axis that's moving to kind of the 1 o'clock location. Um, and like I said, the W is coming up at us. And it uses wherever the points are relative to that. So if we consider this corner here um, as the 0, 0 of the surface and everything that's moving in, in the kind of lower right is a positive U and everything that's moving to the upper right is a positive V, it finds a point along these surfaces uh, for this line. So this line might start at zero, or excuse me, one comma zero, and end at zero comma one. And what it does is it finds that same point on this um, wrote, uh, uh, um, ruled surface here, uh, and finds the equivalent. So again, if I go ahead and type in dir for direction, you can see that it has a positive axis and that it's moving in a similar location. And the target is actually assigning, when, when it asks for the corner point, that that is actually assigning the kind of localized zero, zero at the time. So it's kind of using that to map it out. We're going to use that concept in a similar way um, to map these uh, undulations onto the surface to the left here. So again, if I were to do this in Rhino, flow along surface, objects to project or to flow would be these two curves. Okay. A base near the target surface, or base corner near the uh, base surface. I'm going to click the lower right. I'm going to do the same thing with the target surface. And there we go, we've mapped that on there. Okay. So now that gets kind of projected onto that undulating, uh, that ruled surface. We're now going to do this though, but we're going to do this the grasshopper method. So let's go ahead and launch grasshopper. Uh, I've got it already minimized here. Okay. And I've got a couple steps going out. I haven't actually described them yet. I'll let you guys do that as we move along. Um, but the big idea, first and foremost, is we need to go ahead and map this along, uh, flow this along the surface above here. Now, unfortunately, there is no actual um, command in Grasshopper for flow along surface, but we can actually essentially build our own. Um, in order to do that, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to break this object down into a series of points. We're going to find the U and V location of those points relative to this base surface, and we're going to apply those same U and V point locations onto the ruled surface over here. Now, like I said, essentially what we're doing is building our own version of that. Okay? So what we want to do is take this base surface and bring both of these curves into Rhino. So again, we're going to use a simple curve command, go to parameters, geometry, and curve. And what I'm going to do is just label these my um, base curves, uh, plural, and go ahead and set multiple curves and click on both of these guys and bring them into, into Grasshopper. There we go. And then what we're going to need is we're going to need our um, base surface as well as our target surface. So again, we're going to parameters, geometry, and we're going to bring in a surface com com component for these. One of them I'm going to call my base surface, and then I'm going to copy that and make another one for my target surface. And we're going to assign those accordingly. So target surface is my undulating one base surface is going to be my flat one. There we go. Okay. Now the first thing we need to do to both of these surfaces is reparametize that. So all I'm going to do is just right click on the surface and click on reparametize, right click on the surface and reparametize. And just for a refresher what the reparametize does is that it essentially says okay forget about what the dimensions of the actual surface are. Call the start of the surface 0 and the end of the surface 1. Call the start of this surface 0 and the end of it 1. Therefore, when I'm kind of mapping this, it has the same boundaries, if you will, to map the surface. So the midpoint here is the same as the midpoint on this surface. That's just going to help us uh, project these curves easily onto that. So the first thing we want to do is take our uh, base curve and divide that into a series of points. The more points we have, the more accurate this is going to be. So we're going to go underneath our curve division. We're going to divide the curve. With this curve, we're going to go ahead and map in the two uh, base curves coming from the single base curve component. And by default, the n, which is the number of curves, is set for 10. We're going to need a lot more of those. Um, you can imagine that the more points we generate, the more resolution, the more pixels essentially we generate, the more resolution, the better that those curves are going to uh, look like, the better they're going to map. So we're going to go ahead and drop in a, a number slider. And remember that you could do that underneath parameters and input and number slider. Or you can actually set that up uh, using the slider, um, set up a slider by using the double click entry uh, keyword search here. 
And by double clicking in the canvas, I'm gonna type in say the lower limit of the, of the slider, which I'm just gonna set for say one um, is less than, let's set the actual slider for say 400 is less than, let's set the upper limit for 500 for right now. And we're gonna go ahead and divide that curve 400 times. And there we go, we got a whole lot of curves. And in fact, for right now, let's just go ahead and up that all the way to 500. So now each of those curves have 500 points, subdivision points uh, along it. And you'll see the result then is 10, or 1,002 points. Remember that uh, you're dividing it actually into 500 segments, which means you actually generate one extra point, start and finish for each of those segments. So Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use those points and we need to find out what their uh, U and V location is. Remember the point locations are X, Y, and Z locations. Okay, so these locations here are Euclidean space X, Y, and Z, 60 units, 2.8, and zero because they are on the X, Y plane. We wanna know what those are relative to uh, or what the UV points are relative to the base surface. So what we need to do is tell it what surface we wanna find those points that are relative to. Well, we've used this before. If you go underneath our surface analysis and surface CP, uh, surface closest point, You'll see that it asks for a set of points to test. Those are the points from our division. And it asks for a surface. What is the surface that we wanna find the UV? Well, that would be from the base surface. So here's our base surface. So we're gonna run that into our base surface. And you'll see now the result is not only their Euclidean point locations, their X, Y, and Z uh, in Euclidean space, okay? But also their relative UV uh, point locations right here. Uh, based off that surface. So there we go. They have relative UV. And notice that all these values are less than one because we did reparameterize the surface. Therefore, the lowest bounds should always be zero and the highest bounds should be nothing more than one. Okay, and you'll see there you go. So those are the point locations, the UV point locations of all of these, uh, of these curves. Okay, now we wanna go ahead and project those UV points onto um, the actual surface, the target surface, if you will, okay? Um, so what we wanna do is we wanna make a curve on surface, okay? So we're gonna go underneath our, our surface tool. I'm gonna first off just find it for us, there it is, okay? Um, so we can find it easy enough if you go to curve on surface, go to your curve tab and then go all the way over to your uh, sp spline uh, panel and then down to curve on surface, okay? So the surface we wanna make those curves on is our target surface and the UV point locations are the same UV point locations we just found from our base surface. And there you go. You'll see what you get is a curve that's connecting all of those points that we generated uh, mapped on that undulating surface. And let's go ahead and just turn off some of this old data. Okay. And we don't need this panel to anymore. Okay. So there we've gone. We've essentially done the flow along surface command, except for the fact that we've generated it uh, with a couple more components because it doesn't actually exist. And you'll see that this count, which is the number of subdivisions, okay, is essentially a precision. Um, so this could be our precision slider. Um, and as you slide this, you'll see, okay, nothing much happens in the high 300s, 400s, but when you really start getting low, you'll see that your surface really dumbs down or your curve, I should say, really dumbs down. Remember, that's because of the accuracy within there. Um, that's because of the fact that you're sampling fewer and fewer points and that it kind of creates a modified version of that surface. So we want this thing nice and high, okay? So there it is, there's the uh, projected points along the uh, undulating or the ruled surface, so, okay? So now what we need to do to go back to our uh, example here is that we've generated one of these splines. We essentially need to mirror it, but we don't need to mirror the whole thing right now. What we need to mirror is the inside one to find its companion, the opposite version, so that we can start to make the form, the uh, kind of fiberglass form. Okay, so we need to find which of these is the inside one. We need to mirror it about an axis, okay, along that curve, right? And then create the kind of uh, mirrored version of itself. So let's go ahead. Now we've done, that's kind of one whole step. Let's go ahead and just group that together. 
And at this point, you can write a little kind of some notes for yourself that essentially we broke down, subdivided the base curves, we found the UV locations, and we mapped that onto the undulated or the ruled surface target, uh, target surface there. So now from these curves, we want to find which of these two is the inside one. And by inside one, I'm, I mean the one that's kind of further down the vault, if you will. Uh, so let's go ahead and anytime we want to find one item out of a series, we're going to go to list items. So go to sets, lists, and list item. And we're going to put those two curves into the list. Oop, that's not the one I want. Sets, list, list item. There we go. And you'll see that, oh, what it's done is it's gone ahead and listed both of them. The reason being is that they're in two different sets of data. So if I drop a panel tool in here, you'll see that there are two different lists going on here. And this is pulling the zero index item, while both of these curves have the zero index item of their own list. So we want to put them into a single list. To do that, we simply flatten it. So I'm going to flatten it coming in. And now what we've done is we've isolated just a single one. So the data structure is now that there is a single list with two items because we flattened it. And the zero item is not the one we want, so we must want the one item. So I'm going to drop in a panel tool, put the value one in there, and run that into the I input of the list item component. And there we go. We get the one, the inside version of that. So now we want to go ahead and mirror that about itself. So what we want to do is create a line, um, a, a mirror plane, if you will. So we're going to go underneath our mirror. You can find that underneath our transform, uh, Euclidean, and mirror. The mirror needs a geometry to mirror. That's easy enough. We're going to mirror, for right now, we'll mirror both of these items. Okay. We really, like I said, are only focused in on the inside version, but we'll mirror both of those geometries. But we need a plane to mirror about. Okay, right now it's set for the world uh, XY plane. So when it does mirror, you can see basically it's mirroring on itself. Okay, but we actually want to create a plane that starts at the end of one of the, this inside curve and runs through the other end of that same inside curve. So what we want to do is find the ends of this curve. So we're going to go underneath our curve analysis and endpoints. And we want to go ahead and create what would be an XZ, so it's running along the X and Z. So an XZ plane, so you can go underneath vector, planes, and XZ plane. And the origin is either the start or the end, it doesn't matter. But the fact is that it generates a plane that runs through the end or the start. Again, doesn't matter if I can use the other one, it's just going to go right there. And that's going to become the mirror plane. So there we go, we get a perfect mirror, which means the inside ones are touching at exactly one location. Okay, and we have our first kind of module, if you will, of the, um, of the form. Okay, last but not least, we need to isolate the inside one here again. So again, we're going to use our list item component. So again, we're going to go to list item. Okay, and again, we got to flatten the data. So we're going to go underneath our flatten. And you'll see that the zero item is the outside one. We want the one item again, which is the inside one. So again, we're going to go ahead and copy this panel that already has that one in there. You could also restring it if you wanted to, but we're going to just kind of make life easy and copy that. And there we go. So now we've isolated between this list item component and this list item component. We've isolated our two inside um, curves. There's one of them and there's the second one. Again, we're going to group this real quick and give ourselves a little definition. So. I'm going to kind of pause this first, ver this first uh, video from right here. We'll pick up on the next stage in a second. Go ahead and take a moment to uh, annotate what we've just done there uh, before you kind of start with the, with the next step.